Well, hello there, friends. You're probably watching this video because you, like me, are a designer and you love designing websites and applications. I love designing websites. I love designing applications. But the problem is that when I'm done doing my piece, I then need to hand off my work to somebody else who can bring that design to life. I'm gonna be really honest, I'm not a developer. Although in the past I have coded some websites, I do a little bit of front end, a little HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I am by no means a back end developer. I don't know Swift, I don't use Xcode, I don't know Android Studio, I wouldn't even know where to begin to build a full blown web application. Enter the solution to our little problem, and its name is Flutterflow. Flutterflow is to web applications and software what Webflow is to websites. It's a visual coding tool that allows you to create websites and applications that you can then actually launch not just to one platform or app store, but to all of them. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick intro to Flutterflow, give you a little bit of a taste of what it can do, and I'm also gonna introduce you to the biggest pieces of value that using a tool like Flutterflow can bring you as a designer. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the biggest reason why you'd wanna use Flutterflow. And that's the fact that you can take your designs and actually create real applications, not some sort of subpar, not some sort of fake application, not a really good prototype, actual code that gets pushed to the iOS app store, to the Google Play store, and is also still usable online as a web application. Let's just jump over to the website. You can go to flutterflow.io to check it out. You can hit the button. The link is down in the description to start for free. But while you're here on Flutterflow IO, this kind of says it all, doesn't it? This is what we're going to see in a little bit is your builder screen, visually dragging and dropping and putting elements inside of your project and then connecting the actual layout, the containers, the elements to actual real world data. And that means what does this button do when you toggle it? How, when we click this screen, where does it lead to the next screen? How can we sign up, sign out, check out, pay for things? Everything is possible inside of Flutterflow. And again, this is not a fake application or just a really good prototype. It's a real deal app that you can get up into the app stores and online like that. Awesome point number two is the fact that you can start building better prototypes instantly. This means that if you wanted to, you could bypass your design tool. You could have a simple idea, simple wireframe, and then open up something like Flutterflow and then start prototyping there. It'll allow you to go screen to screen. It'll allow you to do complex interactions, animations, all that stuff, but you're doing it in the place where you can immediately then take it to the next level, fill it with actual data and get it online if you want to log into my Flutterflow account, and you can see we have inside of my dashboard here all of the projects that I'm currently working on. We have projects here. We also have a marketplace that's currently in beta, but if you need something like a nav bar or a, a, a social network profile screen, if you wanna grab entire projects to start with, you can do that, or you can just grab bits and pieces and kind of swap and cut and paste them into any project that you're working on. Then you have organizations, resources, and all your other stuff down here on the left-hand side. But let's go back to my project, and let's just say I wanted to start building a new prototype right now. All I have to do is head up and hit the Create New button, and it's gonna tell me, hey, what do I wanna call this? I wanna call this, you know, Tester, app like that. After you name your app, you can scroll down and see all the different options for how you want to start. Do you want to start with a blank project or do you want to start with a template? This one right here, this Sniff Social comes with 19 screens. That means it comes with potential Firebase connection. Later on, you can connect your project to a Firebase database. It will serve as the back end for your application. You can use Firebase to do that. But it also comes with push notifications, custom functions, group chat built in, triggered animations, and generated content. Now, Flutterflow has given us our project. We have a place to start from. We have different pages, as you can see over here, all the different pages in our project. And we're currently on the login page. We can move over to the chat page and see what that's gonna look like. And we can customize this as we see fit. We can create brand new pages using components that have already been created right here. And if you don't like the way that the components or all the base styles look, you can edit those as well. But this allows me to dive right in, bypass all of the work, use pre-created components, templates, and screens, and just immediately move into this prototype mode. It is well designed. It's easy to understand. It's easy to use. And if you've used a design tool like Figma or Adobe XD, if you've tried out Webflow, 
this is gonna make a lot of sense to you. So you can see we're logged in now to my builder and we have my project on the center over here. The left-hand panel has a bunch of different tools I can use just like a design tool and everything on the right-hand side is contextual. So you can see I'm currently in, on the build screen and that will allow me to add elements inside. If I wanna bring some text, I can just drag a piece of text onto the screen and there it is. You can see it says, hello world and that is now officially inside of my application. Icon buttons. YouTube players, video players, toggleable icons, Lottie animations, just there's all sorts of stuff that you can use here. If there's something you can't find, it's probably coming soon, or you can do it custom. Underneath that on the left-hand side, you have the widget tree, which is gonna show you all of your pages, all of your components, and it shows you all of the elements inside of the current page that you're currently on, just like Webflow, super easy. Below that, you have what's called storyboard mode, which is like a high fidelity user flow diagram. You can see all of the connection points. You can see how your entire application kind of stitches together and how the user gets from A to B to C to D. Underneath that, you have a series of tools that are all about connection. The first one is going to be your fire store. This is where you would connect to your Firebase database and you can see the schema or the setup and all the data that is available to you inside of that database. And then at the very bottom, you're gonna get settings and integrations, which I love this screen because it's gonna give you access to a lot of different stuff. The first one being theme. You can set a project wide theme for your primary, secondary, tertiary colors. This is why you can actually bypass Figma if you want to just go off of rough wireframes, come in here and start visually designing and then you'll have your light mode and your dark mode theme. You also have defined nav bars, application bars. They'll show you an example of how those look, which is really, really sweet. You have things like general details and your project setup with Firebase and languages and platforms, permissions. You also have app settings like setting up your push notifications and authentication and web publishing. You want different integrations and subscriptions like Stripe or Braintree or Revenue Cat. You find all that there. You also have some other integrations like Superbase, GitHub, Algolia, which would be search analytics, a whole bunch of other stuff. You can find all of that here on the left-hand side in settings. You go back to our build screen and you tap on any element inside of your design, you get a slew of options that are contextual to that element, just like Webflow. So you can see we have all of the properties. This is gonna be padding, any conditional visibility. You can do alignment and what text is inside the button and what button it's using, all very stylistic property-driven things. But then you also have the ability to jump over and do action flow editing, which will allow you to say, hey, when the user clicks on this, where does it go? Do you need to add a series of actions? Like perhaps the user clicks on a button and it goes to edit profile and then opens something up and pops another dialogue. You can do really complex interactions here. You can also add backend queries here so you can get really, really technical. You can do animation on page or on trigger animations. Next amazing thing about Flutterflow is that there's no development setup. Let me say that again, there's no development setup, no setup of your environment, no maintaining that development environment. It's all baked right into Flutterflow because I'm gonna tell you, if you're not aware, setting up and maintaining a development environment is kind of a task, it kind of stinks. And Flutterflow has made it really, really easy. You can see I'm in a brand new project that has nothing going on. It's really simple, just a, a header up here and nothing inside the body. And if I wanted to launch this really simple application, I can do that because up in the right-hand corner, Corner, I have the power in the palm of my hands to do amazing things. Like first and foremost, we have versions of our project. We can save new versions. We can always go back to previous versions. If we don't like the version that we just released, we can roll it back a step. That's a very handy thing to do in your development environment. Then we have the menu where we can see bugs. We can see errors. We can see warnings. And then if we have any of those warnings or errors by clicking on them, it's actually going to reveal them inside of our project. We can fix those and then go back to launching our application. Application. To the right of that, you have the developer menu. The developer menu is awesome. It's going to let you do things like view the actual code base. Like Flutterflow is not locking down the code base. It's not proprietary because not only can you view the code, you can then connect your code base, your project to a GitHub repo to have that traditional kind of GitHub push and pull request kind of workflow. Or you can just straight up download the entire code base. If you're using Flutterflow for a year and you're like, hey, I'm, we're ready to move on. You get to take all of your toys with you. They don't lock it in in some proprietary way. And to the right of that, we have two very magical buttons. The first 
one of which allows you to preview your application just like that. Flutterflow has loaded up a preview of our application. It has limited functionality here. So you might not see some animations or some tricky things, very similar to Webflow. It's just showing you a basic preview of your application. You can see it here in mobile view. We can also click and find a tablet view of some kind if we want to view that. And you can see that our project is actually extendable because responsiveness is baked right into Flutter. That's the power of Flutter. That's why you use Flutter, AKA why you use Flutter Flow, because you can code it once, make it extendable for desktop, for mobile applications, so on and so forth. So we have that. We could also jump up to some sort of desktop web application version. Let's look at a MacBook Pro 15 inch, and you can see it cuts out the device and it just shows you what that would look like in your browser, which is super nice. Now, once we've tested our application, we have it looking exactly like we want it to. We can actually open up your builder, head to the top right hand section, and then we can actually run our application. Flutterflow is not just going to show you a preview, but it's going to build an actual version of your application that's working off of the actual Flutter code base. This means that it will have everything inside of it. It's packaging it up. And from this point, you're almost there. Actually, you're very, very close to publishing your app into the app store. Next up, let's talk about making full blown apps and let's talk about how quickly you can actually create them. If you have spent a little bit of time and attacked that learning curve and you've understood the platform Flutterflow as a whole and you start building an application, it's very possible that you can build a pretty robust MVP over a weekend. What I'm talking about is the possibility for you in a weekend to actually build an application that's connected to a database that you can log in, create an account, get authenticated, and potentially even chat and post content. You might be able to build your own clone of Twitter or your own copy of Instagram within a weekend and no dev team is required. Let me show you an example of a project that I've been working on. I've only put a couple of hours time into it and I already have a pretty decent start. And this is an education platform where users can log in, take courses, track their progress. Um, and all of this is done inside of Flutterflow. You can see I have a sign up page, sign in page, a place where they can create their profile, um, you know, phone validation, forgot password, all of the onboarding stuff is there. It also has this homepage where users can see their dashboard, their courses, their progress. We're going to build in active tracking of their progress. You can see all the different users that are there. They can click over to the courses page and see the courses that they're working on. And then also a profile page so they can update their profile information. This is the web view. We also have a tablet view and it actually goes nicely down into mobile view. And uh, we could preview it right now if you want to just jump over and see how the user would be able to actually click back and forth. Um, we have some horizontal scrolling. All of this is done using Flutterflow. And again, it's only been a couple of hours of work. Once you have your project, that project is built in one code base and it's available to go everywhere. And it has some native things built right in. For instance, again, we have not only all the different device sizes, but if I want to look at this here, what does it look like with the keyboard up? Yeah, it's going to look like that. What if I want it in dark mode? Hey, switch it over to the native dark mode of that operating system. It's going to look look like this. So sky is the limit and you get lots of functionality, lots of capabilities here, and you can do this across the board for your entire app. You can see it at scale, work with it at scale and make sure that it's available at scale. And that's the biggest deal is making sure that your application is available to as many people, because if you're building an app, don't you want as many people as possible to see it and use it? Yeah, you do. With a few more hours of work, I'll be able to set up the Firebase database, make all the connection points, and then actually send this application, a real version of it, a staging version of it, to users and get actual feedback from them. So I'll be able to say, hey, download the test flight, you know, open this up, sign up for an account, log in, see how it works for you. And I can ask them real questions because they actually did create an account. They actually did sign in. They actually did download it. It's not just a Figma file that they walk through and do their best to act like it's real. It's really real. Well, that's it. That's Flutterflow in a nutshell. You can do so much more than what we showcased today, but those are also seven of my favorite reasons to start using it. If you're interested in trying out Flutterflow for yourself, check the description for some links that'll get you started. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things and pushing the limits of what you can create. We'll see you in the next one.